1B from the free response section gives us the information of density of bacteria in a table and we're being asked to find the total mass in milligrams of bacteria in the petri dish given by the integral expression 2 pi of the integral from 0 to 4 of r fr dr so the couple things that we should we need to approximate this using values in a right Riemann sum with the given subintervals so a couple keys to this so first of all, although it does not ask for the units, it's important to note that FR is the density in milligrams per centimeter squared, which makes R, FR, DR, or R times DR gives a centimeter squared times the density FR, that gives us the milligrams. So it's good to note that, first of all, two pi R, DR, the integral of R, DR, times 2 pi gives us the area of a circle. Okay, so that gives us the area units. And so if I multiply those area units by the density FR, that's going to give us the total mass of bacteria. So integrating 2 pi R FR DR gives us the total mass of bacteria. Okay, so that's what we're looking for then. And we're being asked to find a right Riemann sum. So we've been given information of FR, but what we really need to integrate this is to have the area or the height of the graph of 2 pi r FR. Okay, so that's important. So I'm going to then use that table, and I'm going to get determine the value of 2 pi r FR based on the table. So when r is equal to 0, we know that the area is going to be uh, pi times uh, 2 pi r times fr. So 2 pi times the radius is 0 times fr gives us an area of 0. Okay. So then filling out the rest of this table, when r is equal to 1, 2 pi r is, is going to be 2 pi. And then the fr is 2, so we end up with 4 pi. And we also get for r is 2, we're going to end up with 24 pi. When r is equal to 2.5, I'm going to end up with the area fr is 10. 2 pi r is going to be, uh, that will be 5. So we're going to end up with, in this case, 50 pi and then when r is equal to 4 we're going to end up with 144 pi okay so those are values that we're going to use for a graph so we're going to plot these values in at 0 we get 0 at 1 we get 4 pi which is very very low down here 24 pi maybe somewhere around here 50 pi is going to be right about there and 144 pi is going to be way up here and we're going to use a right Riemann sum so we need to use that right edge to make our rectangles so these are our right Riemann rectangles And then calculating the area of each of these rectangles, that's going to be the height of 4 pi. The first rectangle is going to be height of 4 pi times the width of 1. So we have this area here is 4 pi. In the next rectangle, we have a height of 24 pi, a width of 1. So that's going to be 24 pi. For the next rectangle, we have a height of 50, which then gives us an area of... 50 times 0.5 is going to be 25 pi. And then we have an, a height of 1.144, a width of 1.5. That's going to work out to be an area of 216 pi. Okay, so we're going to then add this all up and we get the total, our total area. So our total area
is going to work out to be 4 plus 24 plus 25. That's going to work out to 53 plus uh, 216. That's going to be 269 pi. Okay, so that 269 pi translates to approximately 800 and 45.088 milligrams. Okay, so that's the, gonna be our total mass of the bacteria in that. And again, we're using a right Riemann sum and that area under the under those curve is gonna give us that, that total mass. The next part of this asks, is the approximation found in part B an overestimate or an underestimate of the total mass in bacteria in the Petri dish? Well, if we take a look at this graph, if I just actually draw in this, now it's important that this is an increasing function. Okay, so it says up here, this is an increasing function. So this is a, if this is an increasing function, we know that it's gotta go up from here to here, from here to here. Okay, it can go, you know, have different, curvature like that it can go up like this but in any case the area underneath that curve is always going to be less than the purple area that we've drawn so in this case here this is going to be an over estimate okay and we can the reasoning is we if it is increasing function in a right Riemann sum it is an overestimate if it was a left Riemann sum, it would be an underestimate. So if we take a look at this, if we use a left edge rectangles in an increasing function, it's an underestimate. We use the right edge Riemann sum, and a right edge Riemann sum is always going to be an overestimate in those cases.